it's DRT Shock here, and I am going to show you guys how to use a very new 4.0 version of Obsidian Destroyer. We made quite a few changes. We actually rewrote the entire plugin from scratch. Um, it was mainly Squidicas with a little bit of help from Turk2 Live and myself. So uh, kudos to them. And we changed up quite a bit, so you guys will probably want a uh, little rundown on how to make this plugin work how you want it to, since it is not going to look exactly how it was before. So, okay, so this is just my uh, IDE, my workspace. I am going to start up my local server, and I just have, let's open it up. I just have Obsidian Destroyer right in there. So we are gonna let it start up here. Uh, da, 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 da. So it is preparing my region. Okay, there we go. So Obsidian Destroyer enabling that and then update checks are enabled by default, but it doesn't download it by default. So okay, you can see that it created this updater plugin metrics and Obsidian Destroyer folder. The plugin metrics is obviously, you guys will recognize that, updater. It uses the uh, new Curse API updater, so you don't have to do anything with it, but if you would like, here, let's close all but this. Um, you can global, globally disable all plugin updates from here and then use your Curse API key, which can be found via the bucket wiki. I'm not going to go through that though. So Okay, let's go into the Obsidian Destroyer folder. And if you currently have Obsidian Destroyer installed on your server, it will um, rename your current config.yml to config.yml.old and then create the new files. So you notice there's not a durability.dat file anymore. That's because we don't save um, all the durability to one file. We now save it to individual files per chunk, and we only load the durability when the chunk is loaded. That means that we don't have a ton of threads open for worlds that aren't loaded and all that other nonsense. So that is heavily optimized. So if you go in this folder, you probably won't want to touch this. It's just there for uh, to save the data, but I will show you guys later what it does. So first, we're going to go through the new config.yml. You'll notice that it's quite similar to what it was before. Um, so it takes a version that the plugin is. Um, check update and download update are the same. Radius is um, the radius of the explosion. So um, say I blow up a block of TNT or yeah, a block of TNT. Three blocks around it will be affected with uh, the plugin. Um, ignore cancel. Um, I recommend not touching this. It is, there was an issue with Mob Arena with explosions not being handled at all. So this just lets us bypass that if another pl plugin tries to tinker with explosions the wrong way. And as you'll notice right here, durability is not in this config file anymore. It is in the other file. Um, so durability regenerates over time. This is an awesome new feature that Squidicas wrote. Um, basically what we did before was we checked if the durability timer should be reset, and if so, set the durability back down or back to its full amount. Uh, what this does now is it slowly regenerates the durability. So as you can see here, if you have it set to 60,000, um, it will regenerate one durability every minute. So that is an awesome new feature that I recommend turning on. It barely uses any resource. Well, it doesn't really use any resources extra. Um, it's just different functionality from what we had before, so we left it to default. Um, okay, now we have effects. What this does is it gives you a 12% chance to display um, mob spawner effects, uh, mob spawner flames, which is actually really cool if you blow up a ton of um, obsidian against, uh, or a bunch of TNT against obsidian. You see the effects, it's actually pretty sweet. I will show you guys that later. Um, Fluids protect indestructibles. We clarified this option a little bit. So what it does is it means that water or lava or liquids um, won't protect normally indestructible materials. So that is only an, um, it only does this if the material is enabled in the other file, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, so this is pretty much for obsidian, bedrock, um, and materials like that. Now this bypass all fluid protection. Um, this makes it so all blocks, any and all blocks, underneath water, so sand, cobblestone, whatever, um, or next to liquids, whatever it is, um, will they or will they not be affected by the explosion? So we leave it false by default, which is the vanilla functionality, but if you want to turn it to true, um, then that's your choice. That just makes it so it's a lot easier to get into people's bases or whatever you have set up on your server. Um, this pretty much right here, if you have this set to true, and this set to true and this set to true, it just makes it so people can still make TNT cannons. 
So we just did a little bit of magic there to allow people to still do that. And then this right here allows you to disable it in certain worlds. So if you want to disable it, say in the main world, main world and your PVP world, you would just do something like that. Um, but I'm not going to touch that right now. I'm going to leave the config as it is by default because that's why I set it up. Um, I try to make things as drag and drop as possible so you really don't have to do much setup to get your plugin running. So okay, we're going to go through the materials.yml file now. So the first one here is commented pretty heavily. So um, it's under the key handled materials. So the first one we do is just an example. Um, it's not actually enabled, as you can see right here, it's stone. So this is a material name and then everything else, or the durability stuff goes under here. So durability is two. Um, if we were to enable this, um, which we did not, so you can enable it or disable it here, or you can just delete it entirely, it doesn't matter, it won't throw a null pointer exception. Um, chance to drop, you guys know that option from before, it's what chance does a block have to drop if our plugin, uh, or if it's supposed to blow up because its durability is expired. Um, reset enabled, whether or not the uh, durability will be reset, if not we will um, I highly recommend leaving this true. If you turn this to false, pretty much you could hit a block one day and then come and hit the block again a week later if it only had two durability and then it would blow it up. And then this one is reset after. And remember when I talked about the uh, timer over here, the uh, regenerates over time, I recommend using, uh, leaving this as true and setting this to whatever you want right there. So it's in milliseconds, so you gotta do the math yourself there. And then these are the different explosion types. So we now made it so you can set the explosion type, um, durability, chance to drop, reset enable for every single individual material instead of globally. So for this one, what I want to do here is for my server, I usually have it there. Well, we're going to leave this one here. So you can TNT, so TNT explosions, creepers, gas, cannons, if you use the uh, cannons plugin, uh, withers, and exp uh, TNT minecarts. So, okay, so that's just the example one right here. Now, if you look at the uh, first one right here, this is enabled, as you can see right here. So we're going to look at this. So durability. Um, so we're going to set the durability to 13. I'm going to make it 2, just to make this easier on myself. Um, reset enabled. We're going to leave that to true. Leave this to uh, 600,000 milliseconds. And then we're going to just have it enabled for TNT. And then if you look down the list here, you can do uh, obsidian, enchantment table, ender chest, just like we all had before, and these are all enabled by default. So if you don't touch this file at all, it is exactly the same default config we had before. If you choose to um, edit it, that's fine. You could simply take it out, delete that right there, or if you wanted to not use this, you could just simply do enabled false. So that's all you have to do. And then we just add all these blocks down here like we did before. And notice that these blocks, the block names are in all caps and have underscores instead of spaces. If you want to add more blocks, like we diamond blocks, whatever, we give you quite a few in here by default. Um, you can go to this website right here and you can grab the material name from that. So you need to make sure that you use the exact material name from there and then you can add whichever block you want. And then you just have to make sure that you add all those options. And you can do this for any block in Minecraft, including if you're using like Feed the Beast or something like that. Uh, you could add their custom blocks as long as they use the same material API that Bucket uses. So, okay, I'm gonna go on the server here. Looks like I made a few changes. I am going to uh, show you guys exactly how to use it in game. So we're gonna connect to localhost real quick. Maybe not too quick. Okay, there we go. It looks like I was testing this earlier and I was having a lot of fun. And of course I would spawn in the middle of an ocean. I made a new world because I blew up a crap ton of stuff earlier. So okay, since we set it to two, I believe, we're just gonna set one, two, and let's see if we can see the mob spawner flames. So let's just light those both real quick. And uh, that one was not within a radius of three. So now what we can do, so let's give DRT shock rows one. Uh, Okay, I don't have essentials, so it's not nice to me. Okay, so you can just uh, simply punch it. Oh, I need to do a quick OD reload. All right, let's check to see. Now it's one out of two. Okay, so now what we can do is light this off. And bam, the block is gone, and it had a 60% chance of dropping, and it dropped. And if you saw, 
um, there were not any mob spawner flames because that was uh, pretty low. So, okay, what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you exactly how awesome this plugin is. So let's go find a material that would normally break very easily. So we're going to add um, cobblestone durability. We're going to make it 10. So this will make it very, very difficult to drop cobblestone. So we did that. We saved it. We're going to run a simple OD reload. And let's see if, whoops, I typed it wrong. OD reload. There we go. So now we have the config. So let's grab a piece of cobblestone here. All right. Let's see what the durability is. 10 out of 10. So, okay. So normally you would, you know, put one piece of TNT next to cobblestone and it would blow it up. But since we're awesome and we're using Obsidian Destroyer, what do you know? The cobblestone is still there. It still has eight more hits to go before it will blow up. So that right there just shows exactly how awesome this plugin is. It can do this with any block you want to, and it is still 7 out of 10. Dang. So we still have a ways to go. I'm not going to sit here and blow it all the way up, but that is just to show you guys exactly what you can do with this plugin, um, exactly how much we changed, and how little resources the plugin now uses. So in the past, we created a lot of threads, did a lot of bad things, which were pointed out by a few people. We just never really had time to recode it. But we've had a lot of people getting on us lately, and it made us motivated to actually do this because it shows that people actually care about the project. So thank you for watching this video. If you want to thank Squidicas for doing this, he uh, pretty much took this entire rewrite on by himself in the last four days. He uh, was freaking unbelievable, and he did a great job with it. So other than that, if you have any questions, make sure to post on our bucket dev page, or you can use our uh, GitHub issues tracker, or you are always more than welcome to join my IRC channel, Pound DRT Shock on Espernet. I am more than happy to help you uh, walk, through, walk through things step by step, whatever you need to help set up your plugin. So if you have any questions, let me know. If not, thank you very much.